but you say if my dog is over cranked and needs a break and, and is naughty, you suggest putting them in the crate. How is this feeding into your thing about it always needs to be positive? Well, the answer is that we're neutral when we do that. Mm -hmm. right. And it's like when you send your kid to your room, their room, right? You want, they're having an argument and you're like, you know what, we can't talk about this right now. Go to your room, calm down, and then we'll discuss it, right? So it's kind of like that with the crate. You're just super neutral. You just put them in the crate and shut the door. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Dog Sense. I am your host, Kathy Santo, and I'm here with my co-host, Sarah. Hey, Sarah. Hey guys, we have an awesome guest with us. Lauren is back. Yay! Yay, hi By guys. popular demand. Do you <laughs> know how many people at the school were like, oh, Lauren's on the podcast, when's she coming back? I'm like, don't worry, we got you. I'll come anytime you guys want me to come. It's gonna be the three of us, that's the new show. There you go, <laughs> that's fine. It. I'll come here Love as it. many days as I need to. and make my head feel very big. So the topic today, we hear about all the time. People yep. who have dogs or puppies who are resistant, AKA don't like, AKA hate their crate. Mm -hmm. So I wanna talk about some solutions that you guys can do right now to try to move that along and get your puppy or dog to have what our dogs have, which really is they love their crate. All right, Sarah, you wanna jump on first? Yeah, sure. So first thing I wanna talk about is the type of crate. Some dogs do better in a wire crate. Some dogs do better in a plastic crate that provides a little bit more of that den environment. So you want, if your dog is having a really hard time with the wire crate, maybe they're digging at the crate bars, that kind of thing, you might wanna try a plastic crate instead to see if they do better with that. And sometimes it's a ventilation and a visual thing too, right? Yeah. Like a dog who maybe a push face dog is in an airline crate, the plastic one, and they're not getting, they're just hot and they're panting and the mm -hmm. wire crate opens it up a bit. Yeah. yeah, and even if you have like an open crate, um, think about, you have to think about what the, like what the dog is looking at, right? So even if you have a wire crate, if you have blankets over the crate, if something's on top of the crate, if something's behind the crate, if it's in a corner, like think about what it looks like to the dog, right? So I do that sometimes. I'll like squat down. I'll be like, what is the dog looking at, right? <laughs> Just so like I can get a visual of what they're looking at and then I can get a better understanding. So moving all that stuff out of the way does help too. Yeah, and sometimes you think the dog doesn't love the crate because they're barking or fussing a little bit. And then you're like, oh my gosh, maybe they have to go out or maybe they don't like it. You take them right out. Mm. But maybe they were just settling into it, right? So you got to give them a little time to sort of like figure it out. Also, let's talk about what people put in the crate as far as bedding. Mm -hmm. So some dogs don't want bedding. Yeah. They yeah. are shredders. And you're gonna be so sad when you buy that $300 L.L. Bean bed with the embroidered name and you come home a few hours later and it's poof, gone, right? Yep. Some dogs don't, they're too hot and they don't like it and they destroy it sometimes out of frustration, but sometimes just get it away from me and then they're laying on the plastic. So you have to understand that sometimes that's their aesthetic. Yeah, I mean, and you kind of can get that, right? Bigger dogs, right? Heavier dogs, labs, Bernese Mountain dogs, dogs like that maybe don't wanna be nuzzled up in a blanket or have a blanket in there at all. and. Like I have a little dog, she's 12 pounds. I could put every single blanket that I own in that crate and she would be the happiest dog in the entire world. Yeah. Like she loves to nuzzle and burrow in all the blankets. And then my bigger dog didn't, like he did not. He would rather lay on the nice ice cold floor. Yeah. So, you know, it just all depends on your dog. And that's a context clue. If your dog is laying on the tile floor and not the carpet, right? Or not his dog bed, he probably doesn't want anything in his crate. Yeah, now my one thing that I do recommend for people who like, still feel bad right they're like right. oh but i want them to have something like you can get like those those crate pads yeah right they're they're foamy right but not like super foamy they're they have a you know they've got a little they're good uh but they have like a plastic over it so that way at least it's still cold but it's mm -hmm. squishy enough where like you still feel better about yourself that like, your dog has something nice to sit on um, and it's still cool enough for the dogs. And so. they lock in so the dog can't pull it or dig and chew. We've had a lot of success with it for yeah. dogs who are scratchers and chewers. They just leave them alone. So yeah. yeah, so that's how you can make the dog love the crate too. Make sure it's the right crate for the dog and make sure that what's in the crate as far as bedding matches what your dog wants, not necessarily what you want. Yeah. Yeah, and then also I think the location of the crate is really important too. Sometimes people want their dog's crate to be in the bedroom with them. Other times they want them to be down in the living room, but you kind of have to see what's stressing your dog out. If they're having a bad experience in the crate, is it because they can hear, you know, the school bus going by outside the front door? Or if they're upstairs, 
Do you have a loud radiator or something that's freaking them out when they're in their crate? So pay attention to the location of your crate in your home as well. I had an in-home years ago and it was a lab and it was just going crazy in the crate, biting the bars. So I said, you know, where's the crate, blah, blah. She said, it's in a quiet place. It's in my laundry room. All right, fine. I go over there. The dog's not doing any of it. She's like, but wait, look what happens when I turn on the dryer. Hmm. Oh, when she turned on the dryer, the dog would attack the bars to get to the dryer. I'm like, Aww, move yeah. the crate or move the dryer. Yeah. Like, why connect these two things? Because right. they're linked. They're really linked. She's like, oh, I thought it might be that. I'm like, yeah. And then the dog, no surprise, also chased cars. Right. Yeah. So it was the movement. It was the prey drive because that that dryer was rattling, man. Like it was like vibrating. Aww. I know. So we fixed it. But sometimes the easiest solution is right in front of you. You just have to look at it from the dog's point of view. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Another thing too is don't, we say guilt ruins dog training all the time. I had a client, don't feel guilty about having your dog be in a closed room where the, where the windows are down, the door is closed, and there's a blanket over the crate. That might be where he's happiest. Don't feel guilty and think you're doing like sensory deprivation, right? That might be where he's happiest. Not every dog, but putting them in that dark, quiet space can help them settle and self-soothe in the crate as well. Now, what about putting the dog in the crate just at night? Like, we don't do that. There's a lot of times throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And it just builds that idea that a crate could happen at any point and it's five minutes or it's, you know, it's overnight. It's just, there's no, there's no feeling of like, oh no, it's the crate because it's just, it's normal. We don't have any emotion about it. Right. right. We're like, oh, yeah, you're in the crate and done. It's not like, come on, get in the crate. Yeah. I mean, and I feel like that's where the biggest problem I think does happen is people only put their dogs in the crate at night for like eight hours. Right. right. So the dog's great during the day and they're so happy. And then they're like, OK, you know, you turn your TV off. You're like, all right, time for bed. And the dog's like, no, not today. <laughs> like, I don't really think I want to go in there today. Right. Because they know every single time they go in there, it's for such a long amount of time. Yeah. Right. And even if it's people are like, oh, well, I, I put my dog in the crate when I leave the house. Doesn't matter. It's still the same thing. It's not like you're gone for five minutes and then you come back. Right. Either way, the dog is learning. Every time I go in that crate, it's for an extended period of time and it's when nobody's home. Mm -hmm. So I always put my dogs in the crate throughout the day. I mean, my, my dog's 10 and I still put her in the crate a couple of times throughout the day. Yeah. So my dogs have a command kennel, yeah. but they know that kennel also means cookie time. And in the beginning, I'd say, kennel, cookie time. They all like, they're like knocking each out, other out of the way on the stairs, like boom, 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 to try to get there first. It's it's crazy. I should video it. Um, maybe I will video it. And yeah, I say that too, <laughs> right? Like mealtime. Yeah. Or mealtime, right? Uh, my dog associates going in the crate with awesome stuff that doesn't occur outside of the crate. Mm -hmm. And I think that's yep. the biggest thing, right? Great yeah. value for being in it. Yeah, exactly. So what are your guys when you have a client come to classes or lessons, whatever it is, what are your best tips to say how you can get their, their dog or their puppy to love their crate? Well, my, I mean, you know, I think meals is the best thing because, you know, you're giving your dog their food. So I have a lot of people. It's so funny. The other day in class, I was talking about meals and they're like, what do you mean about meals? Like, where do, where do you feed your meals? I'm like, where do you feed your meals? I was like, no, 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 wait, let me guess on the kitchen floor. They're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, and okay. then they want to know, where do you feed yours? Right. Yeah. In the crate. Um, but yeah. you know, the idea is that, you know, you're feeding your dog their meal on the floor. So they're saying there's so much value in being right there on the floor. So why don't you just pick the bowl up, put it in the crate, right? So you're now building value for the dog wanting to go in the crate. Like my dog, I get her meal ready. She's usually like, I'm in the kitchen and she's like at the door, like peeking her head around. Like, are you coming? Are you coming? Cause she knows that when I feed her, she's in the crate. Yep. And then I turn around and I walk and she like spins and she runs in her crate and she soaks. I don't even have to say anything. Yeah, she yes. knows meals mean I go in here. And she gets yes. so excited and she literally runs to her crate. Even to this day, she's 10 years old and she yeah. still does that. Um, and it's a good opportunity, like you had mentioned, for a small period of time. They're in there for like 10, 15 minutes or so for dinner time and then they come out again. Yeah. Oh, tip though for puppies. I do not put the puppies in there. They eat their meal and then they bark and then they come out. Right. I had a lady in class the other day who says, well, I put my dog in there for their meals, but then she scratches at the door um, to come out. And I'm like, okay. And then you leave her in there until she's quiet. Right. And she's like, well, no, like she doesn't like it in there because she scratches at the door. I'm like, no, she's scratching at the door because she knows that you're going to come and get her yeah. out. Right. So you want to at least wait until the dog is nice and calm, cool and collected before you get them to come out. And you could even use that meal bowl or high value it with like other stuff. And like everybody knows, I always talk about stew meat, but my dog's I know I train everything with stew meat in the beginning. So 
you want to build the value for being in the crate. And everybody builds it for coming out of the crate, right? right? Because the dog comes out, it's a big event. Oh, yay. And they go right outside. I want people to be boring. Mm -hmm. When you open your dog's crate, you give them permission to come out and you're like, hey, right? When he goes in, it's like, oh my gosh. And it's like hamburger, beef stew, whatever. Mm -hmm. Also with the meal, you can have your dog in there and open the door and feed them the meal, hand feed it, throw it in the crate so you are part of it. Then at some point you have the dog come out and you're holding the bowl and you're looking at the crate, like look at what you want them to do. And they're like, oh, maybe I should go in there. And they do and you're like, yeah, and you throw a handful in. Mm -hmm. So you can use it in the beginning as putting them in and giving them the meal, but then down the line, you can use it as a training way to Mm -hmm. get them to run into the crate and actually on their own versus just putting them in. Yeah, which build is, that think, drive. Yeah, the drive for it and the value for it. My dog does three spins and then runs in the crate. Oh my gosh. <laughs> she's like she's 12 amazing. pounds and she's like, woo, and then like runs in the crate. Like she's so excited. She loves <laughs> I it. I want that video. Oh. Can you get that? For uh, yeah, I say it all the time and then I forget. And then I'm like, oh, man. Well, when we're done, go home and I'll go home and when I feed her dinner to tonight. Sarah. Yep, yep, yep. I don't think my husband fed her dinner yet. So I'll tell him, don't feed her dinner. Yeah. Have a funny all right. Part. So, what are some other of your best tips and tricks to help get them to love the crate when they do need to be in there for longer periods of time? Definitely something to chew on, mm-hmm. right? For a number of reasons, but mostly because we know that chewing helps release endorphins. And we always say it's the magic 20 minute mark, but it could be longer. So yeah. things that are safe, right? So I'm not talking about rawhide or anything that can get lodged. A properly sized bone that maybe you stuff with something and froze or the properly sized Kong because mm-hmm. you can, you know, little dogs can get a big Kong and get their jaw in it. We don't want that. Right. Um, you know, Ice cubes. I had a student whose dogs loved ice cube. Now it melted quickly. Yeah. Right. But she loved it and she got him in the crate and she plays soccer in there with him. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anything your dog really loves and that can occupy them, even like a licky mat. Yeah. Although yeah. I know you have home, a good tip for the licky mats. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure you're home when you have them. And I smear peanut butter on them or baby food and then freeze them and give them to the dogs. But again, I don't leave the dog alone with that when I leave the mm-hmm. house. I, I just have visions of them ingesting it. Yeah. Like eating the whole thing. Yeah. They probably wouldn't, but I worry. I always tell my puppy people, um, dehydrated sweet potato. Mm. Those are my favorite. And I I still have them for my dog. Um, And they're they're not like huge, but they're big enough, but they're chewier and they can at least eat the whole thing. And I'm actually not worried about her chewing and choking on that because it's it's fully digestible. Like I don't have to worry about her like swallowing it whole because she (laughs) she sits there and just gnaws on it. But those are, I think, my favorite to get for puppies. I bought a giant bag of those. Of course I did. And my dogs were like, I don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and then I had to hear Eric. He's like, oh, Catherine, you bought a big bag. I'm like, stop, I'll fix it. Soaked it in bone broth. Ooh. Nice. And then waited for them to dry down the dog. And then I was like, see, they like them. Yeah. He's like, what'd you do to them? I'm yeah. like, you don't need to know. I don't have to do that. My no, dog no. would eat anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I could put rocks in a bone and but she would eat that. But they don't get She doesn't get that. And my dogs don't get that unless they're in the crate. Oh, always right? in the crate. So it is yeah. a high value treat reserved for that special room. Yeah, yeah for absolutely. sure. Another good one is an antler. If you get them big enough, those are usually no, there's no, usually very little choking risk to them because it takes like weeks, months to chew those guys down. Now, here's Um, what people are going to say. They're going to say, hey, but you say if my dog is over cranked and needs a break and and is naughty, you suggest putting them in the crate. How is this feeding into your thing about it always needs to be positive? Well, the answer is that we're neutral when we do that. mm -hmm. Right. And it's like when you send your kid to your room, their room, right? You want, they're having an argument and you're like, you know what, we can't talk about this right now. Go to your room, calm down, and then we'll discuss it, right? So it's kind of like that with the crate. You're just super neutral. You just put them in the crate and shut the door. They're, there's not, we're not yelling at them. We're not shaking the crate. It's just in the crate and close the door yeah. and we're done with it. But we've done so much positive in that relationship bank account that these things don't even bother it. Yeah. Because 99.9% of the time when they're in the crate is a super positive. Then they also want to know if you put the dog in time out the crate, should you give them cookies? And, and I say, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> because I, I don't want you to think there's a way to earn cookies in the crate, right. right? Put you in neutral, a little time out, and then we can discuss later. Yeah, that one time or those two times or even three times throughout the day that you do that, it's not going to ruin all the positive that you've done. It's like collar grab. We condition it to be awesome and then we use it and they're like, "Eh, whatever. So another good tip is also covering the crate, which can be super, super valuable, right? A lot of times people, they don't want their dog to get too hot, things like that, which I understand. But even if you just cover all the sides that face outward, you leave the sides that are against the wall uncovered, 
blocking the visual can be really, really helpful for your dog to settle and self-soothe. If they're constantly looking out of the crate, looking at all the different things that are going by, or if there's a window in front of them, that just keeps them constantly revved and doesn't let them kind of go into that chill and mellow mode that a covered crate can do. Yeah. And some dogs like to be arts and craftsy and they pull it through. Mm -hmm. So you got to know your dog. And if they do that, you could put like a cardboard box, uh, like an, a flattened one on top yeah, and yeah. then put the sheet over it. Yeah. Um, but I think people always ask me, will he suffocate? And I'm like, have you ever gone camping in a tent? <laughs> yeah. And you close it? Right. Yeah. You don't die. But you have to be careful, right? If it's a brachiocephalic push face dog, you want to make sure they're getting airflow. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I I like the covering, but some people are worried about that. And so maybe you don't do like a moving blanket. Do something. Right. something. Yeah. Just like to chill them out. Yeah, or like a thin towel or something that like maybe they can't see through and it's still gonna be dark, but it can at least get the air through. But yeah, I never use like a thick, heavy like comforter or Right. Like a fleece blanket, like nothing like that. It's like covering a birdcage. Yeah. Yeah. Up next would be um, kind of the, the white noise, right? That's another really awesome thing that can help dogs settle and self-soothe. What do you guys like to use for white noise? Um, I, well, I can, sometimes I will use like a white noise machine or an Alexa or um, honestly, I have an AC in my dog yeah. room and I just uh, turn the fan on. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. So just so there's background noise and there's still flow and circulation. Um, I guess I don't use it in the winter anymore. Learned that the hard way. Uh, <laughs> so in the winter time, I actually do get a fan. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, sometimes I turn the TV on. Um, yeah. I had a lady today who said that her dad got bought the extended version of Lord of the Rings, like the four hour Lord of the Rings. So the Lord oh, of the God. Rings is playing. <laughs> Well, actually, there's science oh, to back so that up. That's so funny. <laughs> they say that dogs respond best to Caribbean and reggae. Mm. So I say, Alexa, play Caribbean music. I know every <laughs> word to every song that they play on the islands. That's so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and books on tape. Oh, well. So okay. I'll Those have me to play. sleep, too. So you I know what? <laughs> right? And the dog hears human voices. And that's really great if you have a puppy and you're trying to expose them to more voices. Yeah. Do it when you're home so they don't freak out and they're like, who's in the house? Right. Um, but the the just the pace of the speaking just makes some dogs just tune it out. So yep. what do you use, Sarah? Um, usually it's the TV on low. It's probably, yeah. it's one of the easiest things for me. I can just put it on the, it doesn't have to be in the same room as the dogs. I'll put it over in the main part of the house where the dog's crates aren't are. And even the, even if they can hear that, they also then don't necessarily know that I left if there's that background noise on as well. I had a student who left her dog downstairs to sleep with CNN on. It was like, bum, 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 oh, CNN. No. <laughs> and the dog would never sleep. I'm like, well, what are you putting on? She's like, CNN, I'm like, no, you're putting on like a YouTube video of like the ocean or something. Right, right. Yeah. And it really changed it. The dog was like, oh, I feel so much better. <laughs> That's I, I always put on way. cartoons. I don't know why. That's good. I like I, a, a B movie. I think Netflix is going to be like, why have you watched a B movie 10,000 <laughs> times? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I I don't know. I just, I'm like, this. I love this movie. Here you go. So do you. And honestly, like, <laughs> dogs are barking and then they stop. Like, they're, yeah. it really does calm them down and then they fall asleep. So that is my secret trick. Yeah. It's only awesome. an hour and a half. But can we also talk about <laughs> when you leave not to cue them? Yeah. Not oh, to go. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I'm going to work. I'm really sorry. Like, here's your bone. I'll be yeah. back. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Just yeah. Don't make any kind of routine. Right and go. Yeah. Get in, get out. Done. Yep. Just no emotion. And throw all the food in there. That's where the emotion is. The emotion is the yeah. food, the toy, or the bone in the yeah. crate. I think the biggest thing, though, is that people, I think, like you said, like people feel guilty. Not that they're leaving, yeah. but I think that they're putting their dogs in the crate in general. Right. But they're just sleeping all day anyway. Yeah, exactly. And Whereas I think the safety issue yeah. is huge. For sure. Um, you know, you're not home and your dog chews an electrical cord or God forbid there's a fire. Like then what? And that happened to a friend of mine years ago. Her house caught on fire and her dogs were loose and they couldn't find them. Mm. They're running all over. So your police department, your fire department should know where your dogs are contained, whether they're crated or gated. It's just like if you had somebody in the house who was non-ambulatory. I think it is. Mm. It's really big. That's a big word. Yeah, SAT word. Right. It really was. <laughs> and maybe they're on oxygen. You're like, hey, this person is in this room. So God forbid something happens, you know to go there. Right. You can do that. And that just helps keep them safe um, and helps them be attended to quickly if there's an emergency. Yeah. I always put a leash outside my crate. I clip it. I was going to say pro tip too. If you are going to yeah. leave them in their crates, have a leash or make sure that the crate is small enough it can fit through your doorways. Hmm. Yeah. 
true, true, true. So that the first responders can just grab the crate and drag it out. Yep. All right, guys. Any other last minute tips for making your dog love the crate? Not if we want to keep it under an hour. <laughs> I, was say, yeah, I think I could be here for days. Yeah, really. All right, guys. One day. <laughs> As always, if you enjoyed this episode, we'd love it if you would like, rate, subscribe, tell a friend, and share this episode somewhere. Our goal is to continue creating an awesome community of dog lovers and learners. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. <laughs>